Hey beautiful souls, welcome to the Spiritual Social. I'm Lexi, your local light worker, and today I have prepared a channeled love message from the person on your mind. This could be somebody you were in a relationship with, somebody that you feel you have some sort of soulful contact but there is not much of a relationship, or somebody that you've been feeling in your aura, maybe dreaming about, but they have yet to materialize in your life. So it applies to a wide variety of love situations, and this is what they would like to say to you if they could, but potentially they might be blocked at the moment for various reasons. So I've created a love altar here for you today. I pulled in the energies of Venus or goddess Aphrodite and I've also summoned Archangel Raphael, an angel that is supremely healing and Archangel Ga Gabriel. <laughs> this is the archangel that governs over communication and apparently has put a little bit of a block in <laughs> how I express myself today. So... I also lit six candles. Six is the number of love and the number of Venus. So hopefully this preparation and this little love altar is going to help bring in, channel the appropriate messages that you need to hear at the moment regarding this connection that you feel with your person. You have a choice today between three different tarot decks. I have here for group one, mystical dream tarot. For group number two, I have here the Marielle Tarot. And for group number three, we have here the Deviant Moon Tarot. Feel free to pause the video, take a deep breath in, and reflect on which pile is calling to you the most, which tarot deck is calling to you the most. Hi, group one. So you've chosen the Mystical Dream Tarot. I'm going to channel a message from the person on your mind, and I will speak in this reading as if I am them. So let's find out what the person on your mind has to say to you. I'm walking away from anything that is bad for me. I feel like I've been handling my life in a strategic game. Like I was just a pawn on a chessboard. I was moving in between too many options. I was not feeling confident and secure within myself. But recently, I've just discovered that there is something better out there for me. And I want to move into calmer waters. I think I would like to also get out of my mind for a while and tune into my intuition more. I've been dreaming about you. I've been having pretty restless dreams. I've been feeling your energy as well. Almost as if you're a butterfly transforming. I do hope that you're safe. Um, all of these dreams that I've been having about you, um, I envision you clouded and surrounded by something very beautiful, something very nurturing, almost as if you're in a womb. It's the same feeling that I would like to give you. The feeling as if you've just arrived home and you're feeling safe and emotionally stable in my arms. I'm waiting for you to transform and spread your wings widely so maybe there could be some sort of connection between the two of us again. It hasn't been an easy process for me to connect to my emotions. I feel like I've always been a bit splintered. I had to put a lot of effort into developing my intellect and you know, a lot of people rely on my intellect and the power of my reason always trumped and overtook the power of my heart. But I don't know why, since I've met you, I feel as if my heart has been bleeding love. It sounds so cheesy, I know. But there's been this electric energy around me. I've uh, started to read about spirituality, the law of manifestation, and sometimes I genuinely feel like I'm close to liquefying. I've started crying more, which is really, really odd for me because I never show my emotion and I was never comfortable with showing my feelings. But recently, when I'm alone and especially at nighttime, I feel the surge of electricity coursing through my body and I touch the pillow next to me and I see that you're not there and it just makes me cry a little bit.
You are such a beautiful person. I keep having these beautiful dreams. In my dreams, you are by my side. You're walking towards me. You're always dressed in very beautiful materials, like things I could touch, velvet, silk, very beautiful cotton. I feel like I just want to reach out and grab you, somehow bring you closer to me, drag you from my dream into my bed. I really want to manifest you back into my life. And I feel that there is this beautiful energy around you. As I said before, in my dreams, you're protected, you're nurtured. I think that you're either covered or naked. I feel your vulnerability. And yeah, I do also like to fantasize about how your skin would feel next to my skin. You wouldn't believe it, but I am planning to come towards you. The cycles of the moon are really helping me tune into my intuition, but also they're kind of replenishing me with energy. There is an important woman in my life, my mother, um, or another person in my life, such as my grandmother as well. She's guiding me. She's guiding me very wisely, very patiently. She's helping me tune into my intuition. I've even learned a couple of um, spells from her, but I'm not going to share this with anyone ever because it makes me feel a bit embarrassed. If my friends would knew, oh my God, I would just be mocked mercilessly. But she's been giving me some talismans to wear with me, to carry throughout my day as I'm busy working, as I'm busy thinking of other things, of settling deals, of buying groceries, of making sure that all my responsibilities are met I carry her words within my heart and I keep thinking about how to connect more into the energy of my chakras, how to be a bit wiser in life and make decisions that are not so impulsive. She's really been guiding me to move forward and to develop on the spiritual path. And yes, I, I did share with her the dreams that I've been having about you. She knows of you. But don't worry, she's very protective towards us and I feel like she's generally helping us come together. In order to move forward, I do feel that I'm going to take a break. I feel that it's summer, it's beautiful outside, I've been working without stop. Part of me has been working so much because I genuinely don't want to think about entertaining relations with other people. There have been some temptations, there have been some mermaids lurking around me, but I honestly didn't have the energy nor the spiritual inclination to go pursue them. I am tempted, don't get me wrong. I am still a very sexual person, but I do want to make this work between the two of us. And I am aware that time is a little bit running out. Believe it or not, I've been seeing white animals around me. Um, there is this person at work that has a white dog. And when I saw that dog, I thought, oh my goodness, this is a sign. Um, much like my maternal figure has been advising me pay attention to the signs and I generally thought that this was a synchronicity from the universe you are with me all the time and don't worry there's not going to be any siren that will sway me away from the love that I feel in my heart for you I just need to put myself in a situation of uncomfortable isolation for a while I need to think I need to rest I need to process I also need to do some study. I would love to read a couple of books on spirituality that my maternal figure recommended. And you know what? I also want to meditate and see if through meditation I can send you my love energy and potentially even my sexual energy. I feel that we are lucky, my love. I feel that Lord Ganesh is governing over us. I don't know, but just the fact that I met you, just the fact that I'm aware of your existence and this immensely powerful fire started coursing through my body. I've learned in time that this could be the Kundalini rising through my 
energetic centers and I am getting to know a lot of the deities that might be involved in making our connection manifest. It's a really beautiful journey. I've never been into spiritual things. I always used to make fun of them. But recently I feel like I'm soaring in the sky, like I'm literally being leveled up or uplifted by this connection with you. There's a lot of things I need to cut out of my life and I feel that Ganesh is governing over me. I actually receive a lighter in the shape of an elephant and somebody gave me a belt that looks like an elephant. There are a lot of elephant symbols appearing in my life, much like the white animals I mentioned before. I feel like this journey is incredibly synchronous and incredibly magical and I am deeply grateful for the fact that I got access to this unseen world through meeting you. I can't stop thinking how amazing you are. I keep praising you in my mind. But I'm also aware of the fact that I need to rein in my impulses. I can't just charge forwards towards you. I can't risk a conflict. I can't risk messing this up. I have to be very careful. Almost like I need to put on some very soft gloves and handle our relationship with care. I feel like you are the moon and I am the sun in this connection. And sometimes you are the sun and I am the moon. We each shed a little different light on different aspects of ourselves. I feel like sometimes I'm able to see your shadow self better than you are able to see it yourself. And other times you're able to shed so much light into my life. And you're literally able to bring me back to life. You're infusing me with optimism. I don't know what I would do without you. I feel like you're my guardian angel. You're my sexy temptress. And you're also something really beautiful, nurturing and maternal that is blooming inside of me. I genuinely am starting to feel like we might be one souls connected, but split in two different bodies. Very soon the time to come together is manifesting. I feel it. I, it's almost as if I'm able to, to touch it, to grab it. Even in my dreams, I'm getting more grabby with you. <laughs> I feel like I want to extend my hand and just bring you closer. And I feel the momentum of the situation. You will hear from me very, very soon. Very soon there will be physical touch between the two of us. There will be a communication. And I'm so excited about manifesting this new beginning with you. I had to close off some really terrible karmic pain. I had to let things go. I couldn't build on the foundation of that previous hurt. I feel that you deserve better. And I wouldn't want to bring all that dirt and that energetic debris into our beautiful connection. Believe it or not, I'm really protective of this love. Now that I finally realize what it means, now that I've opened up to the spiritual path and I'm not fighting it anymore, wow, I sit here in amazement thinking how blessed I am not only to have met you, not only to have opened up and surrendered to this connection, but also how grateful I am that very soon I'll be able to touch you, I'll be able to spend time with you. We'll be able to do all those things that lovers do together. We can walk around, explore, have long late night conversations, make love, share hobbies together and cook dinner for each other. I'm so looking forward to starting our life together. If you were wondering if I'm still connected to someone from my past, the answer is very clearly no. I've walked away. I've managed to somehow swim up from the belly of the whale that engulfed me and now I'm out. I'm out and I'm managing to swim back up to the surface. I do have to say that I'm still diving deeply into my emotions in this period. This is why I need a bit more time. I'm also enjoying the dreams I'm having with you. I feel like I'm not only able to communicate through my dreams with you, but also I'm crafting a better life for us. I want to get a good handle on this 
wisdom of manifesting your reality. I want to understand how it operates. So until then, please wait for me, my love. We still have to be apart, but just for a little while. I already feel how the waters of my emotions are pushing me closer and closer to you. And I hope that you're also doing lots of good cleansing and letting go of the past so that when we'll see each other, we'll be ready to build on a better and more solid foundation. <laughs> Whatever happened, whoever meddled in our connection, all sorts of difficulties that we had to encounter, moments when we had to prove our strength, all of those things made us better. They transformed us. They made us more spiritual, more attuned to ourselves, to the frequencies of the earth, and kind of like to our divine mission. I feel that life has a deeper meaning now since I met you. And I'm also incredibly happy to know that a sense of divine justice is about to enter both into your life and mine. I feel that where we were imbalanced before, now we are being rebalanced. Everybody who tried to meddle in this connection is being slowly removed. The karma is clearing and lifting. And as it does so, we don't have to be so strong and hold back for so long. We can slowly let the walls of our heart melt down. Let the water cleanse us so we can be open and vulnerable with each other again. The next full moon is going to be a momentous meeting for us. I do feel like we are protected by angels and to a large extent, I'm not sure how much in control I am of this manifestation. I do try to understand how it works to manifest love and to manifest you especially back into my life. But I do think that there are other forces around us who are weaving this thread of life. There are cycles that we need to pay attention to. There are limitations and blockages um, within ourselves that we need to become aware of and to purify. There's still a bit more homework to do, but I'm confident that very soon we will meet each other. Just remember that if you're having some conflict in your life at the moment, if you feel that you're trying to be positive, you're trying to keep hope and to float above the water, but there are people that might be kind of like attaching their negativity to you or challenging you, just remember that this is just one small dent in our water, in our clear waters, the clear waters of our love. Conflict is actually helping us realize where we need to heal it's helping us become more aware of our shadows the more we kind of integrate them my love the better and more whole we're going to be and the more we can express and truly enjoy this love i'm with you on this you're never alone and if people are arguing with you at the moment be the better person and take a step back i'm always by your side i've got your back Don't worry, very soon we'll be able to build things. Very soon we'll be able to have all the material aspects of our relationship. We'll start first with communication, then with genuinely being present, being physically there, touching each other, comforting each other. I'm so looking forward to giving you the biggest hug that I've ever given anyone in my life. Without exaggeration, I just miss you so much. I've always missed you feels like lifetimes since I've missed you. But very soon, we'll be able to enjoy the fruits of our labors. I love you, and I'm coming home. <sighs> okay, pile one, that was your reading. I hope you've enjoyed it. I send you so much love. Bye. For those of you that have chosen... The Marielle Tarot, this is going to be your channeled message. I will speak in this reading as if I am the person on your mind. Okay, so let's see. What does the person on your mind have to say to you? What would they say to you if they could? 
I had a massive awakening. The situation that I was in was so toxic. It blew up in my face. I don't know what happened, but I feel like I've been thrown out. I've been discarded. I've suffered the loss once again, but this was due to my ego blindness. This was not because I genuinely poured my whole heart into it. I've just realized that I'm trying to push in a direction that is just not meant for me. And I ended up suffering. I ended up losing yet again. I've just discovered who was betraying me. I've just... I'm just feeling so defeated at the moment. I thought the person that I've chosen was the right person for me, but it wasn't because it wasn't you. How could I have been so blind to the truth? Why did it take me so long to wise up? And why, oh why, did I wait for this shocking moment to happen in order to finally wake up to the truth of the situation that I've been betrayed because I chose someone that was just not meant to be for me. But you know what? This experience made me stronger than I ever thought I would be. I think it's about time that I enter into my emperor role. I think it's about time that I lay down the law and organize my life. Just tell everybody what I think, feel and what I plan to do. I'm sick and tired of having other people telling me what I should be doing with my time, with my energy, with my body, with my words, with my money as well. I am the emperor. I need to embody this energy and I need to start making better choices in my life so as to avoid all of this senseless pain and suffering. And I'm so tired of always choosing those people that end up betraying me. Why? Well... Because I wasn't standing in my power, but enough is enough. I want to be a father. I genuinely want to take care of someone. I want to establish a legacy. I want to settle down, build stronger foundations in my life. And I want to do it with you. I keep thinking how amazing it would be if we would have a child together something of you and of me that combined together ends up outliving us this bundle of love and light and energy that will be able to carry the memory of our love together forward but i've been so afraid of this i've been so afraid of this kind of commitment but now that i'm choosing to stand in my emperor power and i'm choosing to do away with all the toxicity and nonsense I want to come in and I want to give you a baby. I want to be with you and I want our love to grow. I want us to build something solid, unshakable and to avoid all that drama that I've loved to bast into my life. Mostly because I was self-destructive and I didn't know what's good for me. You are noble to me. I realize now that I didn't take enough time to get to know you. You're also incredibly alluring. Just like the moon on the night sky. You're very subtle but necessary. I keep having these dreams about you. You keep communicating to me in very subtle ways. I saw somebody's notebook once and it had your name on it. I opened the television and somebody whispered your name. I was walking in a grocery store and I saw a brand of food that had your name on it. This is unbelievable. I tried to forget about you. When I made the choice and I chose the other person, I thought I was doing the right thing. But, oh God, I feel so stupid. What was I doing? I thought that you would harm me. I thought you were the toxic person. But I'm realizing now that it was all an illusion. You are this person that was meant to come into my life and heal me. This fertile, nurturing goddess that I need to start a family with. I'm rising into my own consciousness. 
I'm actually accepting with confidence who it is I really am. I thought for a very long time that I'm a bad person, that I'm some sort of like bad boy on the prowl. But guess what? I'm not. I'm actually quite a responsible, rational, committed person. I'm just making the wrong choices because I choose people in my life based on how they would make me look or what would other people say. But I've just realized right now that it's not about choosing the right person on paper. It's about choosing the right person that makes you feel good. This person that is generally able to nurture me and I'm able to nurture them. This person that I can create a beautiful emotional oasis with. A world of privacy where we can replenish our energy away from prying eyes. I'm standing in my power. I'm calling in divine spirits, divine support to help me let go of any addictions, let go of any toxicity and help me be brave enough to look you into your, into your eyes and to say, I love you. I want you. Let's build a life together. I do have to let go of the fear of taking on this new endeavor. I have to open the gate and walk through it. I realized that it was only the prison of my mind that I was living in. All these doubts, all these worries. I was overthinking everything. It's about tuning into the portal of my heart and realizing things need to feel good, not only look good from the outside looking in. I was so status obsessed. I was so much into other people's advice. I was so gullible for such a long time. I thought I was pleasing my family. I thought I was just doing all the right things. But I'm just realizing that I'm not. I wasn't. I was actually creating a lot of suffering with my indecision. I was actually bringing forth a lot of pain into other people's lives. There was... Nothing. <sighs> this is making me feel so low. I feel like I'm criticizing myself very harshly. But this is a moment of awareness, of awakening, of accepting responsibility for why my life led to that tower moment. I need to be better. I need to do better. I need to walk through that gate and meet you in front of that tower. And I need to start building with you on the foundations of my heart not of my mind. I am aware that I have to sacrifice something. But at the same time, I'm really enjoying this flow of sexuality, creativity, intimacy and trust. I've pulled it all back into myself because of this horrible, horrible thing that I've just found out about the people that were surrounding me. I'm pulling all my energy into myself and I want to unleash it in the relationship with you. Why was I holding back for so long? You are my beautiful lamb. I was meant to protect you. I made all the wrong choices. Forgive me. I'm wising up now and I'm standing in my power. I want to be your emperor. I want to be with you. I want to get you pregnant and I want us to be together. Please forgive me for everything that has happened and I will try my best to forgive myself. And just so you know, I am making this leap forward and I am sacrificing my playboy lifestyle, my toxicity, my bad behaviors because those were only limiting me and they don't defy who I am deep down inside, in my heart, that heart that you fell in love with. God, you've been so brave. You stood by my side, even if not physically, mentally, energetically. I felt you communicating with me telepathically. I felt you sending me signals in your dreams. I've been having these fantasies of you. I felt you sending me sexual energy. Every time I rested and relaxed, you were there. You were always there in those moments when I was feeling excellent. And even in those times of strife, I knew that you had my back somehow. 
Even when you were criticizing me, even when you were telling me off, you were doing it for my own good. I am so looking forward to standing in power with you. I'm so looking forward to standing in love by your side. Not falling in love, but standing in love. We are going to build this together, baby. I can't wait to begin my life with you. You're a true heroine. You're the true beauty of my heart. You are so self-sacrificing. You live so much from the self. I have so many words of praise for you. I just want you to know that I'm so proud of you, that you inspire me with your courage, with your deep spiritual knowledge. You're blooming and I see how beautiful you are. And honestly, I just feel that you have potential to grow into something even more. I want to enter your life and I want to help you grow. I want to crown you as my queen. Together, by my side, you can be my empress. I'll let you take care of me if you allow me to take care of you. If you allow me to worship you. I feel like I need to stop here. That was the message that I had for you, group two, those who chose Marielle Tarot. I hope this helped. I hope this inspired and encouraged you. See you in my next one. Bye. For group number three, those of you that were drawn to the Deviant Moon Tarot, this is your reading. So I will channel a message from spirit regarding the person on your mind and I will speak as if I am the person that you're thinking of. So... find out right now what does this person want to say to you i'm so scared i'm so scared i don't know what is happening at the moment i feel like i might be losing my mind i don't know i feel like there are all these emotions bubbling up to the surface this new moon is really affecting me i'm feeling an overwhelming surge of energy but at the same time i want to run away why do I keep thinking of you? Why do I feel like we're communicating telepathically? Why are you in my mind, in my heart? At the same time, I just don't want you to leave because I feel like you're giving me strength. You're inspiring me. You're making me more creative. But at the same time, I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> what is happening? I'm feeling a little bit bipolar, to be honest. I've been spending a lot of time not sleeping. Um, I've been having some sort of health scares. What's happening in the world at the moment has got me a little bit low and feeling sad and disappointed and kind of thinking, what's the point? Why should I move forward? Um, even my pets have started to behave in very strange ways and I did have a health scare with one of them. So I'm trying to kind of find some sort of emotional stability in this period where I'm just by myself and I'm really struggling with what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling. There's this conflict between my mind and my heart and I just don't know how to reconcile it. I do feel like I need you, but I don't want to need you. I don't want to desperately cling to you because you have your own life and from judging by how our conversations have been going, I don't want to impose too much on you, but just know that I'm thinking of you. I'm thinking quite a lot of you, and sometimes I am ashamed to admit it, but these are really anxious thoughts. I really need you somehow in my life. I am kind of a little bit addicted to your spiritual wisdom, guidance, and your love. I really hope the situation won't progress into worst. <sighs> There's a part of me that is incredibly pessimistic. I honestly did not expect to meet you. I did not expect to open up. I did not want this situation to happen. I was living a perfectly controlled, even if lackluster and uneventful life before I met you. But now that I've met you, all these emotions want to come up to the surface, all these wounds from my childhood. I'm being pushed in the direction of analyzing my relationship with my mother and my father and I genuinely don't want to go there because it's taken me so long to detach from them, to not think about what they have done to me and I'm trying to be brave. I'm really trying to be brave but I'm in completely new territory and I'm alone and 
I'm really sorry if I pushed you away. I'm really sorry if I came across as rude and blunt and cruel. I just don't know how to talk to people about my feelings. You have no idea how difficult it's been in my life. Feelings have never been something that made me feel comfortable or safe. Actually removing them, not thinking about them, detaching myself from them has been the only way in which I managed to cope and push myself through life day by day, one step in front of another. But something, something within me tells me that I need to keep pushing forward in this connection. I need to figure things out. I need to somehow come towards you. I don't know why, but the mystery intrigues me as much as it frightens, propels me, and to a certain extent makes me sick. There's not much happening in my life at the moment. I am in a state of isolation due to what's ha been happening in the world with the situation at work. Um, most of my friends have started to drop off for some reason. I don't feel like I resonate with the groups in which I was part of. And I don't know. I don't know if I should talk to anyone about this. I've been contemplating therapy or counseling, but I just don't know if I'm actually ready to open up my heart to a stranger i don't even know if i'm ready to confront my heart and my feelings i'm just i'm just completely thrown off by having to deal with my emotions i thought i would just coast by in life without having to take them into consideration but something tells me that if i don't engage with them i'll never find the key to my current malaise I am not feeling well, I am very pessimistic and things are just not moving forward as I want them to and I think this is because I've been putting off analyzing my feelings. I never thought that I would want a romantic commitment with someone, I never thought that I would want to walk down a spiritual path but it's just everything that's been happening in my life all the setbacks all the conflicts all the limitations all of those people that came in and out completely unexpectedly and i was left completely baffled what am i supposed to do who am i supposed to choose which way should i go who am i supposed to trust i just don't know there are a lot of fake people there are a lot of fake news on the television there is just a lot of falseness i don't know what to believe in anymore and i feel that when i met you you were real there was something about you that said this person is real you can depend and rely on this person but then again i did a mistake and i ghosted you i pushed you away and i apologize for that i just wasn't even aware that i was doing it you saw some things in me you tried to make me feel aware of what was going on but I'm just realizing at the moment that, oh my god, I do have a very big shadow that I need to integrate into my life because I can't go on, I can't move forward with all these wounds, with all this emotional baggage trailing behind me. So at the moment, I want to take a break. I want to take a holiday. I'm contemplating just being by myself someplace where I can rest. I can relax. I can retreat. You're so much on my mind. You're heavily on my mind. It's almost like I want to eliminate distractions. All the projects that I need to finish. I'm closely, very close to wrapping them up. I'm almost there. And then I just want to go on a holiday and think about us. You might start to feel my energy more. And that's not going to be a coincidence. That's because I'm thinking about us, baby. And I want to figure out what do I want from this relationship? How can I best approach the situation? I do think that you're waiting for an apology from me. And your wish is just about to come true. I've just realized that I've been so difficult to deal with. And I hope that you can... Find it in your heart to forgive me. Wow, you've been holding the ground. You've literally been fighting all that negativity off all by yourself. 
I know how difficult it must be for you. Now that I'm kind of opening up to this connection, that I'm spiritualizing my life, I'm stepping out of my ego, I'm better able to empathize with you. And I feel that I know how difficult it was. I know how difficult it was. And I'm so sorry if I caused half or all of that pain that you've been going through i didn't mean to i really didn't mean to i just don't know what hit me when i saw you i just i'm not comfortable with feelings that are so intense i got spooked i got scared and it's not manly to admit that i'm scared so the best thing i thought was you know don't deal with it just let it float it might go away it might disappear it might float into the ether well, it didn't. And here we are, completely separated, exhausted, tired, when actually I think that we would benefit from just being together. I want to make an offer, a truce. I want to fly a white flag and hopefully you won't batter me down with criticism I am very aware of my shortcomings. It might not look like it, but I am aware of my shortcomings. I've just been educated not to show any weaknesses because it's unmanly, because nobody's going to, you know, reward or congratulate a wuss. But there is this part of me, this deeply romantic part of me that wants to experience tenderness and joy and love and exaltation. And I want to do it with you. I feel that you're receptive to this kind of love, <laughs> to my romantic side. I don't know, it might seem awkward or like I'm saying crap, but I genuinely want to explore this connection with you. I can't stop thinking of you and... From what I've seen around me, if you can't stop thinking about a person, if they are the first thing on your mind when you wake up and the last thing when you go to bed, that means that's the one. At least that's how I can make sense of it. You could be the one. I'm not sure yet. I need to explore this further. And in order for me to do so, will you accept my love offer? Will you accept this invitation? I'm very close to giving you... Um, an invitation into my heart maybe this could be a second chance for us I know I don't deserve it I know I don't deserve it that's why it's so hard to say this I can't even find the right words you're better with words than I am but at the same time I do know that I need to make the step forward towards you and bravely come out of my hiding shell stop the ghosting stop the lack of response and do something about the situation Will you accept my love offer? <laughs> because I've been seeing you in a completely different light. Now that I'm slowly allowing myself to open up, my heart to open. Now that I've been put through this ordeal, this overthinking that kind of sapped my spirit. I feel that... All of these things that happened to me were just pointing loud and clear in your direction. These were all signs and signals from spirit, from the universe, whatever you want to call it, that, hey, this is your person. This is the one. This is your empress. What are you doing not being with her? Go and get her. And this is what I intend to do. Expect some communication soon. It's not going to be a fantastic love letter, okay? I'm not Shakespeare. I'm just a simple person, but hopefully I'm made a little bit unique because I am your person and you are a blessing in my life, <laughs> a blessing that I almost allowed to get away. What is wrong with me? Why do I run away from love? Why do I run away from happiness? I feel like I need to come towards you. I feel like we need to have a conversation, a heart to heart I'm willing to open up. Are you willing to open up too? I really want you by my side as this beautiful empress that you are. Okay, so that was the message that I had for you, group three. I hope that you appreciated this. I was this close to saying group two. 
<laughs> I hope this helped, inspired you, and it served. So, if you have enjoyed this message, I'll see you in my next one. Sending you so much love. Bye-bye.